Good, good for you again. Maybe you might have met him yes, 10 years yeah. ago or something. I believe so. It is totally fine. It's happy. Oh, I'll give it. That was a good quick search. We'll try to ask you that. And they cleared it up. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't give them any, any breaking news this morning. We had breaking news this morning, though. <laughs> To really get to 30, 40, 50 percent EVs being sold, you have to appeal to people that you know are in that 30 to 35 thousand dollar price range. Uh, that's where you know the Bolt is already there, but the Equinox is just a, a, not a phenomenal vehicle. So, I think when we look at the portfolio, we look at our brands. I think that's what's going to drive adoption because again, it's getting that person who only uh, owns one vehicle. You know most electric vehicle owners today own multiple vehicles, so they have an internal combustion vehicle to jump into depending on their needs. Uh, you know, we're really working, again, as I said, to create the whole ecosystem, so buying an EV is just better. Because if you've had the chance to drive one of our electric vehicles, they're fun to drive, instant torque, um, quiet, and so I think there's a lot to offer. We've got gas prices starting to come down a little bit, um, but they're kind of still a burden on families. Uh, interest rates, they're saying another point possibly now after yesterday's inflation numbers. Um, what do you think is going to happen with the economy now? Um, are, are we headed into some sort of recession? You know, it's really hard to say if you think about it. We're in uncharted waters with, you know, coming off of a pandemic, all of the different supply constraints that many different industries have faced. You know, I, I really focus in on our industry and frankly on our company. And, you know, we're, we're watching it very carefully. We always look at affordability, but we're still seeing really strong demand for our products. And so, you know, I, again, I think it's the strength of the product portfolio we have uh, and, uh, we're watching it and you know obviously we're looking at many different scenarios as any prudent business leader would to make sure we're ready for whatever however you know uh, the situation evolves but it's pretty volatile right now. How are supply chain issues still affecting you right now and, and when do you see that easing? So I think we're going to see supply challenges throughout this year and into next. Uh, General Motors from a semiconductor perspective by mid-decade we're going to be uh, leveraging uh, three families of semiconductors that will be able to have higher scale because in the past General Motors really didn't buy a lot of semiconductors. We bought those through our suppliers, our tier ones, our tier twos, etc. But now we're going to be directing and we actually think this is going to be an opportunity because we'll get scale and we think it should help uh, drive efficiencies as well. The recent Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, has GM started any conversations about any changes you may make to your benefit structure as a result of that decision? Well, first of all, you know, we think this is a highly personal and, and a private matter, and so we don't plan to, to, to um, talk um, broadly on it. We are always going to follow state laws and, and you know, comply. Uh, we have for, um, you know, it's been past practice that we've provided those services and we've also had a practice of providing uh, the ability for people if they needed to go somewhere to get, uh, you know, the service that they need uh, of paying for that. And so we're going to, you know, continue with that practice. So there's really not a lot of change in what we're doing uh, from what we've done in the past other than we will make sure we comply with all state laws. Thank you. It was wonderful to meet you. Good to meet we you. Congratulations on your new job. You. Thank 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 you